Welcome to Think Deeply, Speak Simply, brought to you by Present, a show about the art and science of communicating ideas and how business professionals can unlock their careers and achieve their full potential with great communication. And now, here are your hosts, Jay Rook and Antoine Valentone. Brian, you're the Director of Critical Facilities Engineering and Implementation at T-Mobile. Can you tell us about your role and expand on the critical aspect of your job? Absolutely. So I, I lead a team that is responsible for all of the critical facilities within T-Mobile. So these are our data centers, our mobile switching offices, and all the infrastructure that goes in there. And my team does all the capacity management and forecasting. We develop the strategy for all the critical space. We do all of the engineering, both for the facility, along with space and power. And we also work with all the different platform owners in network technology to deploy all new hardware throughout the network. So every time there's a new technology that comes out, it goes through my team to get implemented into the field. And can you talk just a touch more on sort of the, the critical aspect of that? Yeah, so the critical facilities that houses our T-Mobile's network. So when a facility goes down, we lose a network. And so we have extreme focus on making sure the facilities are resilient, that we have uh, backup power and diversity, and really it's to support our customers. I mean, there's so many 911 calls, you know, outside of, of just people texting and saying, hey, I'm going to be home for dinner. You know, there's a real critical aspect that if the network is down, if a facility fails, you know, people at their worst, when they need to get a hold of first responders, they won't be able to do that. So it's it's really critical that we maintain, you know, these sites online, the network stays online, and we have uh, diversity and resiliency built in. Brian, thanks for uh, clarifying, because I was definitely curious myself. Um, you know, I was looking at your profile uh, just to learn a little bit more about you after we initially met a few weeks ago. Uh, and it says that you flourish in deadline-driven environments. Can you talk to us about uh, that time pressure and why you feel you excel in those challenges? Yeah, yeah, I uh, I get excited. It, it's kind of like when you're coming down to the fourth quarter and there's 15 seconds left, and you gotta, you know, you gotta get a touchdown or you gotta kick a field goal. Uh, I get excited with with uh, when there's a when there's time sensitivity or or a time constraint. It really, I, I feel like it. It drives me to be more creative on how to solve uh, issues or remove barriers for the team. And, you know, there's a lot of satisfaction with accomplishing something that, you know, you'll, you'll always have naysayers that think, oh, this can't be done. It's, it's, it's very rewarding uh, not to prove them wrong, but to really uh, support the business objectives and make sure that things are moving forward um, against, against ob different obstacles that, that, are, that uh, present themselves during the course, course of an initiative. And in your opinion, uh, how do communication styles change when the stakes are high and the turnaround time is short? Like you were just describing some of the the nine one one aspects and, and the critical component of, yeah. of networks going down. Yeah, well, it, it's it's extremely important to be clear. Uh, you know, right right out of the gate, you have to be clear with what the objective is. Uh, you have to make sure people understand. Um, you know, what's required of them. I think if you if you're clear with your objective and you seek understanding, if people understand why they're doing it, um, I think, you know, that helps remove a lot of questions and a lot of conversation and, and just be to the point. I never felt like you needed to, you know, type up a, a, an essay to answer a question or to, or to tell what the objective is. You, you need to be clear and concise. Everyone's busy. When you're under time pressure, it, it makes time that much more important. People don't have time to read lengthy emails or attend a, a, a bunch of meetings to discuss. Be clear with the objective. Make sure people understand what it is. Move forward. Yeah, that makes perfect sense, Brian. Now, in, in critical situations, uh, sometimes emotions can run high. I know it's something that I've struggled with in my life. How do you navigate the emotional peaks while choosing your words? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, you know, people have different uh, motivations uh, and triggers and, and, you know, everyone's different. You really never know how they're going to respond when emotions are high. And so I think for me, 
the the best thing, the way I've been able to kind of maneuver my way through uh, those situations is is to be very consistent, stay consistent, uh, make sure the the people are focused on the outcome, and and just remain even keeled. You know, let them know, hey, things are going to go wrong. It's okay. You know, let's let's focus on overcoming the adversity or or working up a creative solution. Uh, to keep things, to keep the project or the or the initiative moving forward, or to make sure that everyone that uh, that needs to understand and knows what we're doing, that that they're in the loop as well. Uh, and I think that's, I mean, in my personal experience, I mean, I wish I could say, hey, I've always been great at this, but 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 you know, that's just not true. I mean, every, people are people, and and you you just gotta, I think, you know, you gotta stay consistent with it consistent with the message and keep people on on point and earlier earlier you, you were mentioning uh not having the availability to have multiple emails going back and forth uh prior to some of these communications and so when we lack the luxury of multiple drafts and peer feedback uh what do you focus on when crafting communication on a tight timeline yeah so specifically with with you know uh, written communication i was i always put the objective first Okay, this is what we're doing, and then I I let everyone know what the intention is or why we're doing it. Uh, it removes a lot of questions. People don't have to worry about politics. You know, like oh, why why is he asking me to do this? If you just come out front and say this is what we're doing and this is why we're doing it, it removes a lot of questions from the equation. It gets people to just to focus on okay, I understand why we're doing it and I understand what needs to get done. How can I, how can I help? How can I move forward? Like what, what's my task in this? And I think, you know, when, when you do that, state the objective, you know, what the purpose is and, and, and why uh, it, it removes a lot of <laughs> latency and moving, moving forward and getting production done. Love that, Brian. You know, I'm a big fan of Simon Sinek and his book, Start With Why. Uh, yeah. I've heard you mention that a couple of times, so um, uh, makes perfect sense to me. Now, continuing along that same line, when you're under pressure and have to get a message across, what uh, do you check for before you hit the send button? Uh, I always make I always make sure I got the right people on the distribution list. So, you know, it's one thing to craft the email, but there's nothing more discouraging or nothing that can delay uh, you know, an initiative than when you don't have the right people on the email. It, it's demotivating for people when when they get brought in, when something gets forwarded to them or, oh, looping so-and-so into the email. It's like, well, if I was so important, how come I wasn't on the initial email, you know? So I always double check. I always double check that I have the right audience copied, that they're they're in the two or they're in the carbon copy. I want to make sure that people that are critical to what we're doing that they're on that initial email. So I'll, I'll always double check. And sometimes it takes work. Sometimes you have to ask some other people, you, you know, organizations are large. You might not, you might not know somebody is, is a key contributor. And so, you know, before you hit send, make sure, make sure you understand who that audience is and that you're not leaving anybody out. Sort of following along that theme. Um, what about, you know, we think about moving quickly during these uh, critical situations like you said, sometimes you do make that mistake and, and that right person wasn't on the email or w whatever it might be. Uh, how do you kind of backpedal and and navigate when things are uh, a little bit of an error and not ideally how you would have liked to have gone through the first time through? Yeah, I mean, just be transparent. Say, hey, I messed up. Sorry. I'm sorry I missed you. Sorry I, I left you out of the email. Just just own it. Just own it and move forward. And, you know, people are people are pretty forgiving. I mean, nobody's perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. And if you just own it, yeah, it's usually it's usually the right thing to do. Excellent. I right, agree what about today's you. theme? Uh, would you like to discuss that we haven't uh, covered already? Oh, I think I think it's real important that uh, that people flex their style. You know, you know, like I had mentioned, people are different. They're going to hear, receive, and process information differently. You know, in their own unique way. And I, I think, you know, don't be afraid to switch things up, to mix things up if you don't feel like you're being successful or if you're getting feedback that you're not successful, you know, have, have more than one tool in your tool belt. So be, be willing to be flexible because, you know, people will hear and receive and process information. They, they do it differently. So there's not a, there's not a, a magic bullet to being a, su a successful communicator. Hmm. 
I, I'm a definitely a big fan of um, being flexible and willing to sort of adapt the communication style to the audience. Easier said than done, of course, I know, especially when, uh, when you're a time crunch. Um, this has been really fascinating. Um, you know, I'm curious, this is a question we ask all our guests on the show. Do you think great business communication is more of an art, a science, and why? Ooh, that's a great question. You know, some people have, have a natural aptitude for communication. They just, they make it look so effortlessly or, you know, they make it look so easy. And, and, and what I would say, what I would say to that is that, uh, I think it's a science. I think anybody can learn to be a great communicator if they're willing to put in the time and invest in themselves and, and, and be consistent over time. I think time is on your side for improving anything. You know, nobody, nobody in, you know, no 15 year old on a baseball freshman baseball team is ready to go hit a major league pitcher. You know, it takes time to develop those skills. You have to grow into it. And I, I look at it the same way as communication. I mean, some people might have a natural aptitude for it, which people have a tendency to do things that they're good at, and then they just get better at those things. Whereas if you don't have an aptitude, it doesn't mean that you can't become a better communicator or be an excellent, excellent communicator. Invest in yourself, find a good mentor. And uh, I mean, there's so many, there's so many uh, opportunities. There's so, there's so many things out there that, uh, resources at your disposal. I mean, there's books, there's continuing education, there's workshops, there's podcasts, there's a ton of resources out there. If you want to be a better communicator, be consistent over time and uh, find a good mentor as well. Give you some good feedback along the way. I love that. Uh, what advice would you have for aspiring business leaders who want to improve their communication styles? I think it goes back to, you know, invest in yourself, be, be consistent with your focus. You know, you know, there's a ton of analogies out there. You, you don't, you don't, you know, how do you eat an elf time, right? If you want to be better tomorrow than you are today, do something today to improve yourself. Same thing with next year. If you want to be in a different situation next year, if you want to be a better communicator, whether that's at business or at home with your spouse, Hey, it, it takes, it takes some effort. You have to focus on it. You have to invest in yourself. If you really want to improve your communication styles, take advantage of the resources and, uh, you know, and be consistent with it. Don't, don't, uh, don't take days off. And Brian, Brian I, lo I love your analogy earlier of that, that 15 year old uh, baseball player. Is there advice that you would have given yourself earlier in your career uh, that would have accelerated things for you? You know, don't, don't be, af don't be afraid to own those own, own those mistakes. You know, I think, you know, definitely when I was younger, you know, I made plenty of mistakes and, you know, whether it was, I didn't want to, you know, apologize or come across as, as being, you know, not, not the best leader I could be, you know, I didn't own some of those mistakes and you know what I learned from them. And so I would say if I was to tell myself something, uh, when I was younger, it's like, you know, Hey, own your mistakes, move forward, say, I'm sorry, say, Hey, sorry, I forgot to leave you off of this or, oh, I should have brought you to this meeting. Just own it and, and move forward. I love that, Brian. And I, I knew when I first met you, we hit it off for a reason. I think a lot of the things you uh, stated today are, are some of the same things I've said in my own life. Uh, so we're, we are well aligned and I've really enjoyed this conversation. My guess is most people uh, listening to this podcast will also enjoy what you have to say. I want to give you the opportunity to tell our viewers they can learn more about you tell us where they can find you on social media perhaps or the internet yeah absolutely so i mean uh i'm brian.couch uh, i'm out on linkedin facebook uh you know business wise you know linkedin is is my main platform uh, i'm also on twitter under uh, bk mobile pro so that's my initials b and k uh, for brian couch at mobile pro excellent Brian, thank you so much. I just want to, on behalf of myself and Antoine and all of our listeners, just want to say thank you so much for joining us today. I've really enjoyed uh, this conversation and thank you for your thoughtful responses. Really appreciate it. Uh, it's been great. Appreciate it, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for listening to another episode of Think Deeply, Speak Simply. To learn more about the art and science of communicating ideas, visit our free resources at present.com. That's P-R-E-Z-E-N-T dot com.